hello uh, welcome to today's class in today's class we will talk about the master slave d flip flop uh, here is the logic circuit for the master slave d flip flop and we will try to understand its working using a timing diagram but first let us look at the logic circuit and if you uh, if you look at the logic circuit it consists of two d latch so we have studied d latch in the previous class uh, the first d latch in the logic circuit is called the master and the second d latch is called the slave now to the clock input of the master d latch we connect a clock input and we take uh, we invert uh, the clock signal and connect it to the clock input of the slave latch d latch uh, the q output of the master d latch we connect it as the d input of the slave d latch we connect the d input of the flip flop to the d input of the master d latch and we take the q output of the slave d latch as the q output of the flip flop does uh, the d flip flop has a d input and a clock signal input and it produces two output q and q prime so here is the logic circuit for the master slave d flip flop and now let's try to understand its working using this timing diagram in this timing diagram we are assuming that initially d is 0 qm is 0 and qs is 0 as you know qm is the q output of the master d latch and qs is the q output of the slave d latch and the q output of the flip flop is the same as the qs output of the slave d latch so q is equal to qs um now okay so that was the assumption uh, that initially d is 0 qm is 0 and qs is 0 now let us consider this time period where the clock signal is high when the clock signal is high and the clock input of the master the master uh, d latch will be enabled as the clock input of the master d latch is high uh, now since we connect the inverted clock signal to the slave d latch uh, the slave d latch will be disabled because uh, the clock input of the slave d latch will be low if clock is high uh, this input to the slave will be low and hence the slave d latch will be disabled and now from the previous class we know that in a d latch when the d latch is enabled its q output will follow the d input which means that if the d input of the latch changes its q output will also change accordingly the latch becomes transparent when its clock input is high so since the master is enabled the q output of the master d latch which is qm qm will change according to the d input so as you can see in this diagram the d input is changing from low to high 
and since the Q output follows the D input, QM will also change from low to high. If D changes, uh, QM will also change. And this change will happen when the clock signal is high. That means the master is enabled. However, since the slave is disabled, uh, if you notice this QM is the D input of the slave. So now since QM is changing, will QS change? Uh, QS will not change because the slave is disabled. So even if QM is changing, QS won't change because QS which is the output of the slave the, and the slave is disabled because its clock input is low. Now let us consider this time period where the clock signal is low. Now since the clock input is low, uh, the master will be disabled this time, whereas the slave will be enabled. And now since the master is disabled, even if the D signal changes, its Q output will not change which means even if D changes, QM will not change. And that's what we see here. D is changing from high to low, but QM do not change. QM, which was high, continues to be high. So changes in D is not affecting the QM, and that's because your master is disabled. And the master is disabled because the clock input of the master is low. However, the slave is enabled, which means uh, the QS output will change as per the value of QM. And here, as you can see, QM was high and hence QS also becomes high. QM was already high but QS was low. Now when the slave gets enabled whatever is the value of QM that would that would go through the delets and will appear at QS. QM is high so QS will also become high. However, it is important to note that since QM will not change any further, QM will not, ch QM will not change because the master is disabled. So even if D input of the master delets changes, QM won't be changing and if QM do not change, QS will also not change any further. Only at start of, only when the clock signal transitions from high to low, at that point QS would change its state. But after that, no further change will happen in QS because it's D input which is QM will not change even if D changes. Now let us consider the next period where next time period where uh, the clock signal is high. So we are considering only half of the time period that means this period where the clock signal is high. Again the master will be disabled because its clock signal is high and the slave which gets, which gets the inverted clock signal as its clock input uh, will be disabled. 
now since the master is enabled the QM output of the master DLATS will change as per the value of the D input and as you can see since the D input is low QM will also become low however since the slave is disabled the changes in QM will not appear at QS so even if QM changes QS will not change and in the next time period actually not time period during the next uh, time where the clock is low your master will be disabled and slave will be enabled and since the master is disabled changes in D will not appear at the QM output so here we can see the D is changing from low to high uh, however QM do not change it remains to be low that's because your master is disabled now however when the clock signal is low our slave gets enabled and hence whatever is there in QM will pass through the DLATS and will appear at the QS output and since the value of QM is low QS will also become low and again it is important to note that uh, the QS will not change any further during this period that's because its input QM will not change and why will QM not change is because the master DLATS is disabled when the master DLATS is disabled even if D changes QM will not change and if QM do not change the QS output will also not change any further so QS will change only once and after that it would not change because QM will not change now let us consider the complete time clock, uh, clock period one clock cycle so this is one clock cycle this is the next clock cycle and if you consider the complete clock cycle you will observe that and the Q output which is nothing but the QS output the QS output or the Q output changes only once during the complete clock cycle so for the first clock cycle Q changes only once for the next clock cycle again Q changes only once and that's the characteristic of a flip-flop that in a flip-flop the Q output would change only once in a complete clock cycle and this is different from what we see in a D latch so here is the logic circuit of the D latch we studied in the previous class this is the logic circuit of the master slave D flip-flop and as we have seen just now the master slave D flip flop changes state only once in a clock cycle. No matter how many times the D input changes state. Whereas for the D latch, as long as the clock signal is high, any change in the D input will be reflected at will be reflected at the Q output so as many times d changes q will also change provided the clock input is high so whereas in case of a flip-flop q changes only once in a clock cycle in case of a latch the q may change multiple times based on whether d is changing or not and provided 
the clock signal is high. Thus, the DLX is called level sensitive, which means as long as the clock is high, changes in D will change the Q output. Whereas, flip flops are edge sensitive. What do we mean by edge sensitive? Will be explained in the next slide. So when we have a clock signal, this period where the clock transitions from low to high is called the positive edge of the clock signal. So this is one positive edge. We are transitioning from low to high. This is another positive edge. We are transitioning from low to high and so on. And when the clock signal goes from high to low, those times are called the negative edge of the clock signal. And now, if you consider this timing diagram, you would observe that any changes in this master-slave D flip-flop logic circuit happens only in the negative edge. In this negative edge, there is a change. So the only change in the Q output is happening only at the negative edge. And hence, this flip-flop is called a negative edge triggered flip-flop. And here is the graphical symbol of a negative edge triggered flip-flop. As you can see, we have this small triangle here. This indicates the clock signal. And then we also have a bubble, which indicates that it is negative edge triggered. Now we may also have positive edge triggered flip-flops. And the symbol for positive edge triggered flip-flop is almost identical to the one for negative edge triggered flip-flop, except that we don't have the small bubble here. So in case of positive edge triggered flip-flop, we only have the small triangle which indicates a clock input. So that's all for today's class. Uh, we will meet again in the next class. Thank you. Bye.